Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to a Wolfram Language Design Review session, part of our incremental language development series. And we seem to have several interesting topics today. So let's start off with LLM configuration. So we have so I should Julia. probably, yeah, yeah should we take this? So here the idea is that um, we have uh, successfully packaged uh, both uh, um, API parameters and uh, top level parameters that we make use of into LLM configuration. So you can see here, like for example, specifying yep. the model, temperature, prompts, tools, yep. for example, is something that could be either. You know, we have a custom way to call tools, but some APIs have the functions or tools uh, they, they provide them. But so this is quite like, quite flexible and functions can ignore the, the keys they don't know what to do about, complain if it is wrong. So it, it's yep. kind of working well. Now, how do we extend this to functions that are not doing text generation? You know, we, you know, we want, we, yeah. I would like to use this in image synthesize, you know, to, to specify different, uh, different model names, different, uh, different services. Yep. Um, so uh, if you can open uh, the, the extensions, yeah, the so I put here like this is a lo low level uh, service provider basically that, that you know I can hook image synthesize uh, using using this function, and this is implemented with LM configuration, so it you know it it does the job. You you, you can you know immediately yes. use Dali three, and so this was worked in a branch. I can be I can add this to prototype. You can play with this. Uh, right. You know it it works exactly the same way. There are a few issues here. If you open the design issues, which, which is actually the topic. I mean, this is kind of a mess because this is this is sort of the parameters being passed to the model that you would like to default in some way from the configuration, but then you want to be able to give them explicitly an image synthesize, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like if, if you scroll down to this, basically, we, we have, maybe we identify more here live, but the, the three main things I have here is like, first one is a slightly annoying naming issue. Which is the, the the most minor, like this is not really an LLM, and uh, like stuff for like like whisper for audio is not an LLM, N not not terrible, but yeah. The the worst is uh, defaults might not make sense. So if you set dollar LLM evaluator to something, that might not make sense for uh, for different tasks. Yeah, because you might want to to have a model for uh, for audio, a model for images. Um, so well, maybe like, we need a more sophisticated thing. Maybe we need an some kind of AI evaluator. I mean, you know, to in what sense? Maybe we need an AI evaluator that is a superset of LLM evaluator, and there's more mm -hmm. like the system services thing, where it's an association. Yeah, I was thinking says, about an association. Yeah. And then, then, then we need to decide if it is by function, if it is by. Uh, no, I think it's by function. I think it's going to get complicated because I think that even in, you know, for example, LLM synthesize can perfectly well should be able to take an image as a prompt. Right. So, okay. I mean, I don't know if that works right now, does it? Uh, sorry, my, my my connection jumped. Can can you can you say the question again? LLM synthesize take an image. No, that 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 doesn't work in top level. We are hooking that now. We have added it. I mean, we have support at the, at the service connection level. We need to propagate it to to top level. Okay, so basically, what we've got is you know LLM synthesize is generating things. I mean. The concept that you're just generating an image, like image synthesize, my guess is that everything in the future is multimodal. Mm -hmm. Right, so you might generate an image with a caption. Um, so the only question is, given, well, that's the question, is what's the target? You know, because it could be the case that that in the future, LLM synthesize, you know, we'd feed in a picture of a duck, generate a picture of a duck, and out would come the image of a duck. 
See what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what's going to happen with multimodal LLM synthesizers, is it not? Hey, with multimodal, you, you can have both in input and output. Uh, uh, I mean, so far, multimodal means that in input, you have images and, and text. I know, but that's not going to stay the case. The thing is, who's going to... Um, yeah, that, that, that can be that, or that can also be that the API is is using different models for different tasks. Like, uh, you know, could it, they could try to offer that they do manually what, what we do. That's why they do automatically what we do manually now. Like, uh, you do one call to an image generation model, and then you feed back the, the result into the into the multimodal text generator to do the you know, captioning or, or comments about the image. Or right. Some, so some the validation. issue right now is this: we have a function image synthesize. Um, presumably, we're going to have a function audio synthesize before too long, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why is it LLM synthesize and not text synthesize? Huh. Thanks for the question. It was yeah. it was the name original name was that, and then we decided to hold on using that name because of you know it might have been something more general in the future. That was the original discussion. So it, it's a scoped name in a sense. Mm -hmm. I see. And we don't want LLM. We don't really want text function. We want LLM function because who knows what that's doing. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in hindsight, it, it was good from this point of view because we didn't think about multimodal stuff at the time. Right. Hmm. All right. So what functions do we imagine we're going to have? We have image synthesize. Um, we might have video synthesize. We have right now speech synthesize, which hopefully will get better. But I think also speech synthesize may be able to have some metadata, like saying, make this be, you know, an angry Italian male age 35 or something. You know what I'm saying? Whereas right now we have voice styles, but I have to believe that coming soon will be a description of what we want. Am I making sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is also the trend, like for for um, images as well. Yeah, like instead of having like discrete classes, you have uh, like both captions generated and and text to to find the image. Yeah, like as a as a fuzzy string. So the the, yes. the trend is is definitely to to move away from from discrete things and uh, and just yeah, have a, 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 an LM right. part that parses the string. I understand. I'm not sure how well that really works because, as you know, as we make the bridge to the symbolic world, image identify going to a a definite entity that we can then compute with is worthwhile. Am I making sense? Yeah, it, it, it's it's application based. Yeah, you know, if you want retrieval, then it's uh, it's useful to be able to say, you know, if you're looking in your gigantic list of of pictures and you wanna you wanna find, you know, that. Uh, uh, that picture where you were young with blue trousers on the beach. Yeah, yeah, right. That's not a class. Yeah, that that that's just it, it's well then good that you have a fuzzy description. But for for the, the, what you say is a different case. It is uh, is when you want to to go on with the computation and do something with the with specific class. So you're suggesting that there is an image search, for example, which is the thing you just described. That's yet a different use case. Yeah, I believe that Google is doing that in Google Photos. I. I don't know because I, I I deactivate that because I'm afraid of it. <laughs> but I, I I've seen that in news. I don't know if yeah, anybody okay. here has an Android phone, but yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, is it similar to like what is now being discussed with vector databases? Like, I do believe they generate some so. form yes, of embedding for pictures. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean... So look, what we've got is. Okay, the main issue we have is that dollar LLM evaluator is set to an LLM configuration, right? Right now, yes. Okay, so the default, so I think the, the,
the kind of the short term solution here is to make LLM evaluator be able to be an association. Uh, Which, yeah, it, it's right, slightly right annoying we, because it is it is already you can already that's a valid syntax and the the thing is that that thing gets wrapped in LLM configuration and this is I this see. has been added see, uh, see, to, see, to be a, a shorthand and so you yeah, don't okay, have to specify fine. always. Well, uh, uh, pa, 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 pa. I mean, yeah, we could disambiguate. That's no, that's always a possibility. No, that's a but mess. It's it, yeah, exactly. All, well, all is experimental and work in progress. So if you think that this is really a much better use case, we could just break the design. Just bring in this. I up. don't think so. I don't think it's a better use case. I think it's a hack. I mean, Let's see. I mean, we could do something like this. See what I'm saying? And then the thing, we could still have LLM evaluator which I think is useful right now. I mean, you know, this this story has not ended, right? We we don't know whether people are going to call it. I mean, right now, LLM is a brand. It's just like yeah. at times in the past, you know, AI back in the 1980s, 70s, whatever, everything we do in Wolfram Language would be AI. Today, you know, AI has started to mean stuff done with neural nets. You know, if you had a rule-based system, it's just not called AI. Not making sense. But that's a, you know, it's an evolution of the language, and I don't really know where that's going to land. Yeah. So. Also, if you look at, at what you propose, uh, that's also tricky because, uh, um, for example, uh, Text embedding, uh, text completion, and messaging are all text-based things. Uh, do they all map to the same configuration? Well, I think mm. I think we could we could have this. You know, we could have something where it goes into more detail. You know, we can have an association here where it just says text. You know, generic text is blah blah blah, and text completion is this, and and so on. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, we need to experiment a bit with this, but yeah, this this is something that was brought up today, and I I think I mean th this kind of works as a stopgap for sure. And and our LLM services layer gives already a good uh, um, hint about what these keys should be, yeah, because uh, each one of those function in LLM yeah. services is collecting different different APIs from different uh, um, service connections. So I mean. Each one of those it symbolizes API calls that we do. So right, we could so start with that. AI evaluator rules. I'm not super fan of the name, but I don't have no, anything I'm not better either. right now. I'm not either. But I mean, I think. Um... I don't know what brand other than quotes AI to use. So, okay, so then the way this would work is these various functions which can use this could get their AI evaluator rules, which could either be just a pure LLM configuration, which means use this for the default action of this function, or it could be this more elaborate thing here, and then there's a dollar AI evaluator rules. Yes, exactly. I, I think that that, that me, as a... As a structure, it, it makes sense. You know, we add one layer of complexity. Maybe we can strip it off before the next release. You know, the, the you know we we start working with this. We, yeah. we see how it plays. Well, I think we we leave the LLM evaluator and it it you know trumps 
the evaluate AI evaluator rules if it is provided. What about uh, AI configuration object like LM configuration? Oh gosh. I just put like a, a sketch in chat. Which chat? The Twitch yeah. chat. Yeah. Oh, okay. I use synthesis instead of synthesized. Uh, not not tied to a specific function. Yeah, no, no, I think that's right. Right, and then the automatic at the end would be the fallback if you're not if you don't specify something, it would just. Well, but what are you suggesting that, that, that we have LLM evaluator goes to AI configuration? No, I'm saying L AI evaluator rules goes to AI configuration. This would just be a generalization of what we have in for LM evaluator and LM configuration, but we could use the same. Right, but this is then a second level. Multimodal I mean, things. What, yes. What we're what we're proposing here is a configuration object which has another layer. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think that extra layer will be terrible, even in even if it was just you know a single configuration, knowing that this is a text synthesis. Configuration seems useful. No, I don't. I don't disagree. This is reasonable. Yeah, right. And th and this would work for multimodal. You know, you could pull things out that you need for the service. If one service for a multimodal request, right. one set, we should some settings this. for audio and some settings for text, you would have it. I think it's a reasonable thing to try. Let's talk about the the size thing and so on right mm -hmm. size is something generically set n i don't think should be generically set that's up to things like image synthesis to decide what that value should be oh yeah yeah. yeah. i mean this is this is because the the, the lm services uses lm configuration as a second uh, parameter but this is internal stuff the um, n see, okay. is an argument in, in image synthesize size is, is image size option and n is an argument okay but fine but i mean we might want a default size for a given model, and I don't see any reason why we shouldn't set an image size in quotes here. Yeah, yeah, in that in case, yeah, in that case, it would be Im image size. Yeah, of course. So it, it's clear that it's image size because it's it's confusing otherwise. This also solves a problem that was my my last uh, um, uh, issue. Yeah, that we, we parameters di with different size. meanings in different domains. Yeah. But I think you should still say quotes image size. I don't think you should use the image size symbol. In the association, no, I, I agree because it's not our option. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, this will be on the same syntactical level as the other things. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't Definitely. look different. This seems reasonable to me. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned. I don't know where this bouncing ball is going to land, and I'm also concerned that, and it might be worth looking at some of the stuff in the tutoring project, um, where, you know, Teo has been working on this this vote of three LLMs type thing and how we do that here. See what I'm saying? I, I was thinking we want something like a LLM graph or LLM chain kind of analogous to what we have for the uh, neural nets where you can basically implement like a voting system where the graph is like a tree or it starts out as a tree with three nodes and then you have another node where those connect into that makes the decision. And, e and each one it takes the inputs, builds using a template. Each node would have a template, and then does an LLM synthesize on that. Right, because each one is going to have to have its own prompting in yes. general. Yes, yep. And potentially its own uh, configuration, like different models and things like that. And it should all run asynchronously. And you know, some there should be a mechanism for canceling certain nodes under certain conditions. Well, so it's basically code. It's not clear that we need to... Okay, so what you're saying is the AI configuration could be a function. I mean, I think the design of those pieces that say... Uh, you, you get what, I mean, I, I agree. I think it'd be interesting to have some of those functions. 
that says, I mean, what are we doing? It's it, instead of LLM synthesize, it's really a parallel LLM synthesize followed by, in other words, you take three things and then you have to do something to them. You, you've got a list of three things. I mean, it's it's code, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you, you can define it as any arbitrary graph where the output of one can feed into one or more of others, and you can you can build up more complex complex. Look at what we're going to run into here. We're going to run into directed asynclic evaluate, which is basically doing that. I mean, for graphs in general. Let's look at that in connection with this, okay? Because I think this this function may be the function whose whose functions become LLMs. Am I making sense? Yes, that does make sense. So let's look at that in a couple of minutes. Okay. I yeah, I have a, a short anecdote to share that may or may not be relevant, which was that last week at JMM, somebody came to the booth and asked, how do I create the, the graph of iterate? I mean, I'm translating a little bit, but how do I create the graph of iterates of 10x plus 2 on Z12 without writing any Mathematica code? So I said, we turned it to the chat notebook and we said, create the graph of iterates of yeah, 10x okay. 2 mod 12. Um, and, uh, you know, and it just did it. It was very impressive. Nice. Well, it's probably because we have some good examples somewhere. We need to, um, that it had a chance to read. Um mm -hmm. Okay. What is who's who's speaking for Vertex Stratify? So we have Brad here uh, who authored these, and we. Are you... Yeah, I think Brad? you've asked um, for this Vertex Stratify to be brought back to ILD because we keep seeing it in in, in all the different projects that we do with directed acyclic graphs. Okay, okay, so then, remind me what it what is. What does it do? <laughs> it's uh, basically a directed acyclic graph is going to have a minimum path length from its initial vertices to any vertex in the graph. And this vertex stratify just finds basically finds those minimum path lengths and writes the vertices down in a list of lists where the first list is vertices on the first level, second vertices so, on the second wait, wait a minute the Sorry. general case of this is the whole foliation thing right we've got this is making yeah. a foliation this is making a particular foliation we've got these other functions nick has this function to make or maybe it's your function at some point to make all possible sort of this is the cosmological rest frame that might be useful to Itai. The it's the the main single output of vertex stratify is the uh, um, earliest arrival foliation. I guess you would say it lists the vertices it as early as it possibly can. Yeah, right. But these are all space-like hypersurfaces in the sense that these are all simultaneous. Everything in a sublist can be simultaneous. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. It's basically level zero, level one, level two. And it, then, it, and yeah, how does it relate to breadth first search? Um, well, the breadth first search tends to go level per level. It goes to the first level, searches everything. Second level searches right, everything. So, but so its ordering, its default ordering, is so. I'm now forgetting. We we've got all these functions for which are in WFR, which we did in the connection with combinators for leftmost outermost. In fact, we we've done that also for tree scanning, right? The leftmost, outermost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera thing, haven't we? Yeah, that's not the design we used, but we have tree traversal order that has depth first, breadth first, and leaves first. Okay. So this is, so what will be the analog? Okay, so we got a tree traversal order. That so So can I get out of a tree? If I use tree traversal order, can I get out of the tree the list of 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 um, nodes in the tree that I will visit in the order that I will visit them? Yeah. How do I do that? Do tree level. 
Okay, so if I say random tree of like 40 or something, and now I say uh, tree, tree level, level of that, comma, tree traversal all, order. Comma, tree traversal order, breadth first. I really understand that. What am I seeing here? Am so I seeing each, these layers? Each subtree in breadth first order. If you just want the data, you can say all goes to data. Quotes data? Yep. I don't understand that. So this isn't... Uh, this looks very similar to Vertex Stratify. The thing that it would that it's possibly missing is the extra list structure that divides them into levels. Yeah. yeah. So this is the list of all the vertices at level zero, then all of them at level one, then all of them at level two, but it's in a flat list. So just so I understand. So so I mean, the point is that in a directed acyclic graph, we can have mergers, which we cannot have in a tree. Right? Yes. Which, um, do the same example, but use leaves first. So this is going by negative levels, and negative level is determined by your children. The corresponding thing in a DAG is that your uh, positive level is determined by your parents. Right. You could, okay. if you wanted to use vertex stratify to get a similar output, you could just do vertex stratify of the reverse graph. And we could okay, even let, let, let's just say vertex exactly. stratify. Yep. Okay. So let's just do vertex stratify here of the um, tree graph of that first graph, right? Well, make sure that you get directed edges, though. Well, do we get directed edges from tree graph? I don't remember. It should have a directed edge option, just like um, yeah, I, I would think so. Yeah, it's directed by default. Okay. Okay, so I'm officially confused here. Well, it's because the oh, I see because the node names you have... might if you. If do you do vertex replace. replace on the tree graph, you can get get it simplified. I think you just want the first of whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Well, you'd have to map that on level two. Okay. So now all that we see comparing this vertex stratify output to the other earlier tree level thing is that there's a random disordering per level, which makes makes sense. Because there's no criteria for vertex stratify being applied to try and um, straighten out the vertices in any particular sub list. Any, so far, any order is, is right. okay. Whereas with a tree, there is a definite ordering. Brad, does it just put the vertex names in canonical order? It it might. I don't know. I haven't I haven't given that much thought to it. Okay. So I mean that's something we could discuss now if there's uh some particular order to Well, I mean for a tree there is, but not for a graph, right? No, for a graph there could be too, because the the graph object itself in its vertex list has a canonical order. No, so I understand. We try to test that if we just do the, the vertex list of tree graph and see if they're appearing in order. A vertex list is kind of the closest thing to vertex stratify. Yeah, I get it. Oops. 373. Uh, 373. Oh, yeah. Okay. You have to map first at that, I think. First onto this. So now we can check. Okay, it looks like 11 is first, and then 
Oh, so their 11 is before. Yeah, so I'm like, confused with this. This is probably in like depth first order. Well, in other words, you've put a con you've put an ordering on the vertices when you create the tree graph, and the question is, what ordering did you put? And you might have put a depth first ordering, which might or might not be right. No, I don't think it would be depth first, but it could be discovery first. Like this algorithm is going to go. I'd have well, to look. Who's whose algorithm? I'm not talking about your algorithm. We're talking about this is uh, um, Ian's algorithm here. Yeah. For. I'd have to this. check, but I think I put them in depth first order so that the um, branch My order job. turns out What's correct. That? I think that whatever order it is, it, it was just so that the uh, tree visualization has the branches in the correct order. I see. It's it's sensitive to the vertex and edge ordering. Okay. All right. Okay. So, okay. So what we've got here is, you know, we've got this directed acyclic graph, and, you know, we're gonna we're going to presumably we're we, we are not going to have a separate DAG construct, which hopefully we don't need, and that our DAGs are still basically just graphs, right? We're not going to have a special DAG object. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now... I could see a use for a DAG object that has ordered branches, but it's not necessary for this functionality, I don't think. Look, we need graphs with ordered, ordered, you know, with ports. Right, same deal, basically. Yeah, yeah we we were talking about that last time. We talked about directed acyclic evaluate too. Okay, so I mean that's the thing we need. And do we have Charles here or anybody from the graphs group? Charles was invited. He declined to come, um, but we can poke him if we need to. Okay, well I think we should. Come time to poke. poke him. Anybody? I think since we already have um, DAGs as our current unordered graph objects, I don't think that the um, graphs with ports or ordered branches should be a prerequisite for this functionality. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. There's still a definite order. It's just that, yeah. Okay. So to me, um, I don't know if we, if if we can poke Nick, see if Nick is around, that would also be helpful. Because I think I think you know we we've got this function that generates all possible foliations, right? Yeah. So does mine. And just to zoom back to when we were arguing about this last time, there was a discrepancy between what Nick did and what I did, and I can only prove what I've done. Okay. Well, I, I, okay. So for example, here, I think I have. Um, Okay, so that's a depth first ordering, right? That's a depth first scan. And somewhere here, I've got many different possible foliations, right? Make sense, guys? Yep. That's a DAG, and that's its many foliations. And, you know, to me, there's foliations. Uh, where does it set it? Okay, graph foliations. Okay. So this is basically all all partitions that respect the order from the exactly direct so edges. yes, but but I've investigated that closely, and I don't know if that's what's being produced because vertex stratify. If we go look at the WFR page, we can see there's another usage that's not just the default usage, and it's going to give you. All, all of the things, and we did. Nick and I did not get the same results. Okay, where's the where's the non? Oh, scroll scroll up there. Returns a comprehensive set of stratifications with at most n additional levels per stratification. Because the okay, the other thing you can do is like, look, this stratification here has four levels to it. But if I say that I'm willing to add one additional level. Then I'm going to get, let, let's just try that and see what happens. So Which, first, the, this this example that we're looking at there. Yeah, just copy that. If we copy that whole thing. Yeah, okay. But I mean, there's, so there's a graph here. Okay. 
and then just extract the vertex stratified G0 and, re and replace that whole statement there, the whole labeled statement, so that we can just see what's the output of the function is. Right. Okay, so add add the extra argument comma zero and see if that changes anything. I don't expect that it would. It says that there's well, only got one. an extra level, layer. Right, because there's places. only one. Now, like, change that. That's a rigid graph there. But now if we change this to one, then all of a sudden there's a bunch of different options. Right. Although now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if it should be an option. Should it be an option to put a blank on the first level, probably, or to leave a blank anywhere? Probably not. I think it might need to be. I mean, Nick is the expert on, on what we've done with, I mean. Well, do I, get a, do I get to be an expert too, or is it just Nick? You can be an expert too, Brad. Thank you, because I've written three or four of these blog posts now. So. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I mean, we've we've done. Uh, you know, we've had different. Um, oh, when you say Nick, you mean Nick with no C. That is correct. Okay, Nick, that Nick. I was confused for a little while there, but now I understand. I I am not an expert in this now. <laughs> The, um, hold on one second, guys. Hi again. Okay. So, all right. So treat your traversal order, you know, the definition of which of these foliations you get, which reference frame is, well, let, let's take a look here at directed acyclic evaluate, because I think it's also related to this. I mean, but basically what we're, what we're doing here Well, actually, there's one for vertex stratify. If I remember correctly, there's one interesting, neat example that's worth looking at. It's on, on the page there. So, yeah, saying like certain, if you have a graph like this, this graph that we just looked at when we did G0, it, it only had one result. Why is that? Because the entire graph is is what I called a rigid subgraph. And there are other graphs, like I guess this one here is an example, where if you try to do vertex stratify zero, then you get a bunch of different options because there's a vertices that are floating around there and they can be perturbed up or down a level. Yes, I understand. I mean, it's it's like... It's simultaneity surfaces. It's like you can sometimes have only one possible choice of simultaneity surface, or you can have multiple different reference frames with different okay. choices of which which events are simultaneous. Yeah, and I think the the use case for having these um, for extending the time access it, with regard to directed acyclic evaluate is like maybe we're doing a parallel calculation where we want to evaluate vertex sure. functions all at the same time, but we're um, constrained by the number of cores that we have available. Yeah, yeah, right. If you have okay, a wide... let's, let's zoom out here, okay? So the function vertex stratify, I don't know if it's the right name. Um, it's not a terrible name. Uh, is, you know... It has a default potentially, which is this breadth first traversal or this cosmological rest frame or this, you know, everything as quickly as you can kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, there is also a depth first version of this, presumably. 
is depth first defoliation though? No, not necessarily. But you can no, start but... it. Yeah, you when look I made illustrations the... on tree traversal order, um, I, breadth I first think... and leaves first are obviously foliations, but depth first has the level sets like inside each other. Right. So the question is, can we label the foliations? And this is kind of like, you know, one thing we've got a canonical foliation, which is this uh, everything as quickly as you can foliation, right? Yeah, we might have another one that's canonical, which is everything as slowly as you can. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think Danny made that point back okay. when we were talking about this. Okay, so then then we've got all um, of the other ask, reference frames. Um, yeah, maybe Brad, you know the answer is the everything as slowly as you can. Is that what you would get from vertex stratify of the reverse graph? Yeah, I think so. Probably. Okay, that'd, that'd be my guess. Which is your leaves first? I think. Yes. Okay. And are those right. the only two? foliations for trees since they have a unique parent each node well it depends on the rigidity thing so some like if there's a short branch and a long branch there for the foliation the short branch can get permuted forward i see yeah okay all right so let, let's then to me look i think vertex stratus by its default seems clear, and it seems like a good function to have. Now the question is, how do you get the other foliations out of it? Okay, And this reminds me a lot of find path. And find path, by default, gives it still gives a list, right? Find path still gives, am I, am I right? Uh -huh. If I say find path of this thing or this thing here, Right. If I say find path of that comma, I don't know, uh, three comma eight, for example, I see it'll give a sub list there. I'm just concerned about. I mean, if I say find shortest path here, because you can also do all, right? Yes, you can. So there, if I say all, comma, all here. There's only one of them. No, that does not seem right to me. Well, let's go three comma six. Well, yeah, that doesn't seem right. You should might just be... specify how long your path should be. Yeah, yeah. In, I think you have to write infinity. Oh, oh. Or double O. Oh. Yeah, okay, fine. Fine. So in the case of these foliations, the question is, what are the selectors that we want for these foliations? Because they very quickly get very long. And, and Nick has this include permutations and not. What is the relationship between graph? Graph foliations is kind of, so if I take this and I say graph foliations of this, let's say include permutations to false. That's only one foliation. Right? That correct. I think that's correct. Yeah. Is that right? Maybe okay. we should try the other graph example where that's non rigid from the WFR page because that will, that one will probably. Which one? That one Which right one? there. This one here? Yeah. I think seed random, if you get the G0 there, it should be fine. There we go. Just this? Yeah. OK. So now we take that. Ah, not the right thing. OK, okay. and can, can we compare that to vertex stratify with the extra zero argument? You've got you've got the analog of include permutations to true, I think. Oh well, let's test that and just look at the length of those two lists and see if they're the same. There's also another property for whether you can allow 
to put a vertex in it. In one of the stratifications. So it's called bundle, I called it bundle foliations. It also may count or to how many of them there. How many did we get over here? It may be the same, actually. I think it's the same. It's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Yep. Okay. We need so, to, if, we're, if we're really serious about this, we need to do a, a detailed double check, making sure that Nick and I have the same definitions, that we get the same numbers every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. So I think what we need to do I don't understand Nick's bundle thing, but this permutations thing is is useful. That that's a useful and probably by default we don't want to generate all the permutations. We just want to generate the canonical order. Because most of the time the big problem is going to be, you know, because any time you can permute any of these in any way you want, can't you? Each one of these space like surfaces can be can have arbitrary ordering. Right. Well, if I guess if they get off in different disconnected subgraphs, maybe I don't know. Nick, do, do you mean within each of the foliation you can permute vertices in any order? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. right. So so so. Yeah, but I don't think the... that's what mine is doing, though. Well, I don't know what it's doing, but it, it yours was nice and fast. That was. Um. Well, they're okay. not permitted. With it. They they are always sorted with initial foliation stratification. As you so right? why how how what are all of these? Include permutations just means that we also get eight six nine. Is that correct in here? No, no. I, I don't think so. No. What does include permutations mean? No, it's it's a well, I can't really remember. It's a algorithmic thing. What they actually do when you consider when you put your new vertex in the foliation right okay, because you well, always look, have a choice and you can do it like in all possible ways or in the first canonical right. okay so the, the, i don't know if there's a trivial transformation from this to the all permutations then we probably just want by default to return the, this thing and if all you do is to say you know permutations of each of these things i i'm not sure but but okay it's not but, it's not that trivial okay fine fine all right. Well, okay. But clearly we need both the canonical foliation and we need a way to generate either a selected set of, of, of foliations. For example, we could do the same thing that we do with find path of say, give us a thing which is stratifying into some number of, of, of strata, if you understand what I'm saying. That will be a way of, because clearly there is a, uh, there is presumably a stratum where everything is being done separately. Yeah, if the number of strata is the same as the number of vertices or something. Is yeah, that right. But right, but I'm saying that as a way to select between because we're going to get very large numbers for even a very small graph, we're going to get very large numbers, and the useful thing is going to be the canonical stratification and other ones. That are, I mean, I don't know how we can say what what other ones are going to be useful. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think what you're saying is that we need to put some time into thinking about how to thin the results out because there are going to be too many results. Yes, but I, I think that a possible approach would be to model what we do with find path, where you give an argument that says what the number of of stratifications, the number of uh, the number of slices in the foliation should be. Well, you know that that's that is already the second argument to vertex stratify, but the, it's a different well, something related. Yeah, it's a different convention. Same idea, right? But but that that I don't think that's going to solve the thin. I don't see how that solves the thinning problem. For the thinning problem, we will like have to specify maybe properties that each level needs to satisfy. Or well, something. fine. So which is similar to the depth first, breadth first type story. I think that depth first and breadth first will play into a resolution of this problem. Yeah, because there's yeah. extra. So, so let me let me just point out this problem is the problem that I've been yakarating about for like three years, which is this problem of what are reasonable reference frames. See what I'm saying? 
And we've talked about this a bunch of times. You know, there are ones that are deeply fragmented. There are ones that look like, you know, that look like this, which is a weird reference frame, right? That's a, um, well, that, that that's just an ordering. But, you know, we can, we can have something where we have, well, down here, we have something where some of these are very weird reference frames. See what I'm saying? Of what's simultaneous. Am I making sense? And there's some that are more reasonable. Okay, so, all right. So we want to have Vertex Stratify. The name is not terrible. Can I suggest graph levels? Because the everything as fast as possible and everything as slow as possible exactly correspond to positive and negative levels in an expression or a tree. We'll consider that. Graph levels is a possibility. Graph strata, maybe. Maybe. I mean, there's also the foliation term. All right, but the, I, I don't know what, which is the right thing. Um, uh, okay, let's go on to directed acyclic evaluate, which I think is a very interesting function. We have Charles um, as well now. Okay. All right. So the basic point of directed acyclic evaluate is there are values coming in from sort of the leaf nodes. And at each non-leaf node, there is a function that combines those leaf nodes. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I might say it backwards that the values are coming from the root nodes. Yeah. Okay, but 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 this is essentially the same thing as an expression tree. Um, this example, of course, this works for DAGs. Right. So the point is that in an expression tree, this is evaluation of an expression. The point is that there can be shared common sub-expressions, which makes it a DAG. Right? In the general case, yeah. OK. Right. I'm so not quite like sure the, what all of the, this is. I mean, these these are just uh, the highlighting is the values coming in, and the frames are the functions at the nodes. I, I okay, think that's but, a bugging usage, basically. The latest thing we've used directed acyclic evaluate for is to. Um, we had these game graphs that Andrea and I made, and we figured out a way to take the entire game graph and prune it down into a minimal version using directed acyclic evaluate so that we got from like having a, you know, a proof that the second player is going to win this game. Maximally, it takes 10,000 vertices, but then you could prune it down to only 40. Okay. And um, that the, the restriction of directed acyclic evaluate is that the vertex function is the same on every vertex. And another one is that it does not, the, the order of inputs is not, not critical or not paid attention to by when evaluating these vertex functions. Mm -hmm. So, so this is essentially, I mean, to me, the obvious name is something like graph evaluate. Or uh, Ian and I have been talking about this last night, maybe propagate vertex weights. Because one of the main design changes that needs to be made from what's at the WFR right now is that we'll probably just return the vertex weights, whether that's as may maybe as an association. So to me, propagate vertex weight sounds okay, because really what's happening is not. It's not. That's incomprehensible. Nobody will understand that use. But kind I mean, of like vertex weight fold. Right. But oh, graph evaluate it may be misleading because we cannot, in this case, uh, do undirected graphs 
And we also can't even do cyclic graphs because the cy we don't have a, a, any idea of what to do if the if no i know welcome to close time like thing. curves i yeah. mean you know it, that's the you know it's the fodder for science fiction of what happens in any universe with closed time like curves that's that's what we have when we have cycles on the graph we don't have a notion of time we don't have a way to stratify time does that make sense well, yeah but this in... function may be related to paths more than just like evaluating or folding something i had this physics Example when you essentially use it to evaluate path integral version on a graph, when you just the same it's basically this you can use it to compute all the paths and sum them over. Well, so you're saying okay, hold on, let me just understand what's happening here. So the most obvious thing would be um, a you know a function f applied at the function f applied to the weights oops yeah you just had that above vertex weight fold of f comma now i don't understand at the nodes that so what would happen is the nodes, the intermediate nodes, wouldn't have weights on them initially. No, no. the the way that directed is directed acyclic evaluates usage is set up. It needs a graph, initial values, and the vertex function. And the vertex function has a, a what what this basic example is showing here is the vertex function. It actually gets a little bit of extra information in addition to just the the preceding vertex weights. Okay, but what I'm suggesting is this. The, I'm suggesting the following. The vertex weight fold of this comma graph assumes that the graph has already had vertex weights added on its leaves. Yeah. I don't know. What's that? And edge weights too. Basically fully weighted graph. With the Why function. do we need edge weights? The second argument for the vertex function in directed acyclic evaluate is the edge weights. And the third argument is the edges. We need, we need edge weights for probability calculations. Yeah. So the function okay. that we're putting there first, if we make it too simple, then the then the then this vertex weight fold, if that's what you're gonna call call it, it won't be able to calculate everything we need it to. Yeah, fine. Fine. So you're saying that that function is going to fill in at every node. Okay, so it's taking input to F is... Well, I, mean, first I don't of, quite understand why, why the input to F isn't just a list of edges. It's the parent vertex weights, the parent edge weights, and the parent edges. So if it was just the edges, they have the edge weights in them, don't they? Usually I'm trying to understand. Just, What's that? Uh, just the edges can contain tags. You have to query for the weights separately. Yes. Where are the weights stored? The weights have to be they, in. It's an they're stored globally for the graph. Is that correct? Yeah. Same Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think directed acyclic evaluate actually uses the vertex it, weights it, and edge weights from the graph. It's it's not it's not, but it could. Yeah. It's not currently, but it could. How how do you put them into the graph? Remind me how that works. Like any kind, of, like any other option, like vertex labels, edge labels. You just say vertex. Okay, so label. okay, so, so but I mean that, that option, if I know, just say if I just say graph A goes to B. B goes to C, and then I say vertex weights goes to one, two, three. It's one, so that vertex weight. Singular. Okay, how do I find those vertex weights? Is it annotation value or something like that? 
Yeah, yeah. Charles, can you say, please? Annotation value of a graph then second argument vertex. Wait. Is Charles here? Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm here. Okay. But so the vertex weights are stored as a metadata to the graph. They're not stored sort of microscopically, granularly inside the graph, correct? Um, right. They, I mean, all the property, anything which is not topological structure, uh, annotation associated to the graph, not well, granularly. What is the input form of the graph on 395? Well, the input form doesn't represent anything. It doesn't represent how we store, right? We, oh, okay. we build the inform form, but because you ask, you ask for yeah, the okay, okay, form. Okay. okay, but so the basic point is that in your folder here, what you're doing is you're taking, at every node down here, you are taking the weights of the edges that come in. But more importantly, the weight of the vertices. That in. came in from here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That were evaluated so far. Yep. What about the names of the vertices? Uh, that That is handled through a third argument, and that can also be important because if you have... The name, especially if you have the name of the vertex that you're on, then you can start, it, it's a little cumbersome, but you can start switching the function that you're evaluating. And we have yeah. to do that for some of the game's proofs. Yeah, okay, okay. Because you have to fine, evaluate fine, fine, a different fine. function for player one and player okay, two. Okay, so the, the function f needs the third, to take... Can I just say the third argument is the edges, and from that you can get the parent vertices and the current vertex. Yes, I understand. Okay, so the F is taking the incoming, the vertex weights the vertex, the edge weights which should be equal in number to the vertex weights and the edges themselves, right? Yes. No, that's not crazy. So, for example, if we want to do probability calculations, we would be that function for probabilities. Uh, we would simply be adding probabilities, right? So it would be a total of hash two. Is that correct? Well, we no, no, because because you have you're going to have the the edge weights are for the probability usage is just going to be dividing by the out degree of a particular vertex, but you're still going to have some value on the vertex. So you've got to multiply the value that's on the vertex by the edge weights. And so I think that that's probably going to be a dot product of number one and number two. Yeah. And I'm okay. So is that right? That it's the vertex. It's literally that. Yeah, probably. As long as you have the edge weights set correctly in the vertex weights, too. Okay. Like Starting to favor graph weight fold, since we have vertex and edge weights. Yes, it shouldn't be vertex weight, right. Well, but, okay, here's, here's the question, then. Are the, are the edge weights going to get rewritten? Because the vertex weights are being written lively, but like with this probability usage, you have to put in all of the edge weights and they never get edited. They never get changed. So for that reason, I'd I say see. keep the vertex weight full. Because that's the only thing that's getting rewritten. Yeah. Well, so... But then this will return a graph, is that correct? In which the in which the vertex weights have been rewritten. I'd rather that it didn't do that because then we've got all sorts of extra overhead time for the users inputting the annotations, and then when they get the graph back, extracting the annotations. And well, okay, so hold on. From, that, 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 that's... from a practical point of view, 
I'd rather just be able to input the in initial values as an argument like you would with nest or like you would with the extra. Okay. Argument. But that we can do oh. that. We can do both cases, right? So this here would return the graph and I need to do something here. So hold on a second. Um, But I don't think we can have two output forms, can we? Well, we can if we have a third argument. I mean, so if we say the graph and then we have init here, where init, how do we know what order init is in? How do we know what the leaf nodes are that we're going to give or the root nodes that we're going to give the init for? Root, the root nodes have no end component. I understand that, but what order are they in? It's a big mess to figure out which ones they no, are. It's, the order doesn't matter at all. The order, the first thing that vertex weight fold would do is calculate a foliation or the stratification. Once it does, then it knows how to proceed through and calculate all the values. Okay. Here's all the problem means. that I have. In this graph, yeah. okay, we don't know, for this init, we don't know what the... You know, it has, you know, five inputs here, right? Yep. I have no idea in what order those inputs are oh, going to Oh, right, yeah. So just put it in as a list of rules or as an association. Okay, or so you're even... saying that that init could be V1 goes to weight one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying that it could be that. I'm saying that the version that's published on WFR already is that. Okay. All right, okay. So that's that's giving. So there's a question of if it should be a list of rules or a function. And I think maybe we could have some flexibility. Both have strong here. arguments. Function is good. Association is good too. R list of rules good. I think that the list of rules is sensible because the graph is of finite size. You can always generate this function by yeah. just saying by mapping it over vertex list of graph. Yep. But in the case where you give that init, then to me, the output, given that you've had that init, then the output could be a corresponding list, could it not? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that's... And if you don't give the init, the output is the graph. If that's good for everybody else, it works for me. I think it's sensible. So you'd have, if in the two argument case, it would need to be a weighted uh, vertex and edge weighted graph. Exactly. And then it would overwrite the vertex weights or maybe, by doing this operation. I think right now, directed acyclic evaluate uses the vertex names as the default um, vertex weight. If no fine. weight, if no weight is, satis is specified. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. I mean, it can do something like that. That's fine. I think that's a little it's weird be like because they, because the vertex names are unique, which is a kind of a weird thing to do. I think it would be sensible to just initialize all vertex weights to one for probability calculations. Because that, that more... seems sensible. That seems more sensible to me, that the default is vertex weights are one. If no weights are specified. Well, why not zero? Charles, what does vertex weight go to automatic do? Is it? different in different functions. I think like the find path functions has default weight is one. No, technically all the weight are always one. Okay. Fine. Even so for that's what we should. Same with edge weights. Charles, edge weights. Um, actually is the other way around. Uh, in general, the edge weight are always, the edge weight are one. The vertex weight, we don't require them to have a specific value. So we don't have any case where we actually need a specific value or set up a default value for the vertex weight. Okay, well, so we can pick one here. I think it's a reasonable thing to do. Um, the dot product will just return path count by default. Which is great. So F being the dot product, if F is dot, I don't even know. We might have to do hash one, hash two there. All right, I think we've got a plan here. I think I need to run along here. But if, if, is there anything else we can cover right now? I, this looks like a good plan. And I think we should start off 
Vertex Weightfold is not my favorite name, but let's start by with that name. All right. That seem reasonable? Yep. Thank you. And uh, I think it's a great function and very useful, particularly if people can understand it. And and then I think we've also got a plan for whatever vertex stratify or vertex levels or graph levels, whatever it should be called. Yeah, Danny linked to the Wikipedia article for graded post set. <sighs> We're not going to call it that. There might be related terminology there. It's absolutely related terminology. I mean, as is foliation, as is reference frame, as is, you know, traversal order. Yeah, there were, there were a bunch of terms in there that that's what I was getting at. They call them ranks, among other things. Each right. level. I we also noticed Lieutenant that Colonel. You know, um, yes, one of thanks. Yeah. Um, this is also not a huge extension, as far as I can tell, from topological sort. Hmm. I never remember what topological sort does. Well, it gives a sort a sorting that's compatible with the grading that um a sorting of the nodes compatible with the grading given by uh, vertex stratify for example i see well that's a good connection to make so it's possibly just a catenation of vertex stratify that's of the default what it looks like stratify. to me yeah the default vertex stratify I mean, it, it's a concatenation of a vertex stratification, yeah. whether it's the one in that particular function, I don't know. Yeah, because there's a possibility to rearrange per level. Well, why is the, the, yeah, why is two so far up there? I don't know. This looks wrong. I mean, something is different. We have to understand this. There's not, a, there's not always a unique topological sorting. Right. So this may be a particular foliation That's correct. and not the one that we're picking by default, which is probably wrong, and we probably should rethink topological sort for this case. So whatever yeah. traversal order we use for stratify, we should also probably be able to use for topological sort. I, I would be careful on that. Uh, I mean, Charles probably can comment, but I'm guessing it was written for efficiency, and we shouldn't force it to do something different if that's the case fine but but this is this is a similar operation to this stratify operation yes very much so well i mean the fact that there are 17 different things that all lead to the same end result of wanting the stratify operation means we need the stratify operation and it's no surprise then that it's showed up in a bunch of stuff nick and brad and i have done but the political sort probably also appear in more things so it's a matter of point of view. Whatever. I mean, I, I, my point is that this general operation of, you know, forming an ordering of vertices by some kind of foliation type thing seems like a generic operation and we should have that function, which is what right. we were concluding anyway. Because graph users will be gratified that their DAGs can be stratified. Say that a few times fast. <laughs> All right. Well... Um, if I can make one more suggestion, if we're willing to explore the different vertex stratifications, maybe there's a chance to put an extra argument on a topological sort and do something similar there. Yes, I agree. I agree. That's what I was suggesting, that it should agree with the, with what we do here. All right. I think we got a path forward, so to speak. Talk to you all soon. Bye. That's all. Bye. All right.